All right, folks, it is now 2020, and I finally got off my butt and done something that I've wanted to do for years. I bought a van. So yeah, I bought a van. I've always wanted one. I've wanted one for as long as I ever thought about overlanding or possibly even living out of my overland setup. I've wanted a four-wheel drive van. Now, this van is not four-wheel drive. This van is currently two-wheel drive. We hope to change that at some point, but right now it is two-wheel drive. Of course, what's the first thing I decide to go do with it when uh, you get a new toy or a new vehicle? You gotta take it out and do some winter camping. Right now we're up in some mountains. It's currently snowing. It's supposed to snow actually for the next several days. Uh, pretty much non-stop, pretty high percentage. But anyways, I thought, yeah, we'd see if we can't find a little spot along the river. You know, uh, living in a van on the river, how about that? And a uh, little snow camping, a little van life. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm stoked and excited. All right, guys, well, we've just pulled into a spot. It's still snowing like crazy. Um, there's only a couple inches on the ground so far, not too bad, um, but just bad enough that with two-wheel drive, uh, having only two-wheel drive, I did have to put chains on the van. I know, I, don't be, I know I'm not a big proponent of chains, but in this particular case, you know, without having four-wheel drive, if I would have been in the pickup, I would have had no issues getting in here, but with the two-wheel drive van pulling the trailer, I did have some issues getting in here because it's fairly wet snow right now, uh, really slushy underneath and the van was just spinning out all over the place. So in this particular case, chains did come in handy as far as that was concerned. I did get some good chains for the van. Some of you guys in past videos said I wasn't using very good chains, which I guess I'll agree with you there because these are much better chains. But anyways, with all that said, we are here. We do have a beautiful spot. There's a nice little creek flowing down here or a little bit more than creek a little bit of a river um, but it's really beautiful we got the snow dogs are out playing in it a little bit but first things first I want to get uh, everything set up I'm going to kind of evaluate how much firewood I have on the van um, I've got a few a few pieces but I'm not really sure if it's enough for tonight and tomorrow so we'll just kind of have to see how that is we may have to go cut some more we'll just kind of determine that but let's uh let's Let's get a few things set up and then uh, see where we're at from there. All right guys, so we got camp all set up. Um, I'm really excited about this. I think this is gonna be just an amazing spot to break the van into some winter camping and break me into the van life, uh, the whole van life movement that I've been pretty interested in for a very, very long time. And just uh, you know, a couple months back or so, or a month back or so, when I spent some time with Chad with living the van life, it just, um, I finally decided that I had to make it happen. I had to make it happen. 
and so I'm really excited about it. Um, I found this van on Craigslist. It's a 1995 E350. You know, it's got some years on it, it's got some miles, a um, few dings and dents, uh, no different than me, <laughs> but uh, I went out, test drove it, played with it, you know, took it out. I actually pretty much fell in love with it right out of the gate, and um, but decided not to buy it. Actually, I decided not to buy it because I wasn't sure my finance was quite where I wanted them to be. So I, I hemmed and hawed on it. I went back and started looking at more vans on Craigslist and kind of just dreaming and wishing. But I realized that my heart was already kind of on this van. And um, it's one of those situations where I didn't choose the vehicle, the vehicle chose me. And I really do think this van kind of picked me out and said, hey, you know, come buy me, let's go adventuring. And I just couldn't help it. I absolutely had to buy it. And so I'm super excited about it. It's not new and fancy like a brand new some of the brand new rigs that i've been seeing some people picking up and stuff but to me it's pretty exciting and like i said van life is something that's been an interest to me long before i even knew what overlanding was um i've always wanted a sports mobile i've always dreamed of a sports mobile and of course the old van here is far from a sports mobile but uh yeah, I'm excited about it. I'm super excited. I'm excited to be started on it. And I've already given the van a name. The van actually has a little sticker. It's actually on the other side of the van, but a little sticker of a Sasquatch on it. And so we've decided that the van is going to be called Sasquatch, um, which, you know, kind of a couple meanings for me there. A, I think it's kind of a cool name, but B, um, it, it kind of give, continues to give me, you know, like hope and determination to build this van into the van beast I believe it can be. So like I said, I do want to get four wheel drive for it, um, a four wheel drive kit. That's going to take some time. I've got a lot of other things I want to do to the van, building it out and making it exactly the, the overland vehicle and um, that I want it to be. And I just think it's going to be super cool. And I'm just, yeah, I'm just stoked about it. Just really, really stoked about it. So I hope you guys will be excited about it too. I hope you guys will want to, you know, enjoy kind of following along as the van metamorphs from where we are now into, like I said, the Sas Sasquatch van beast, I believe it can be. And um, yeah, so, but anyways, I think I need to get some more firewood. I don't think I got quite enough. So we're going to go run out with the van right now and see if we can't find some more deadwood to, uh, to cut up and bring back to camp so we can uh, really enjoy this winter camp properly. We're just gonna cruise along in the van here real quick and we're just gonna see if we can't find something to uh, cut up. I'm sure there's probably something fairly fresh that maybe has fallen just recently, hopefully near one of the roads. So we'll just kind of cruise a couple dirt roads and see what we can find. All right guys, so we drove around a little bit, not too far, just down another couple dirt roads. We're in another spot here where it's obviously another dispersed camp uh, where people camp a lot, but uh, we found this tree here that's uh, down, obviously just fallen. It's uh, broken. It uh, broke right down here um, up off the actual tree it's sitting next to. So uh, it looks like it's been down a little bit, but you know, you can tell by the fact that there's still some pine needles on it that it hasn't been down very long. I'm just gonna take a little bit off the end here that looks really um, really dead and probably at least dry enough. Like I said, I've got a bunch of wood already that is perfectly dry, so I can start burning on that and then I'll, I can supplement it with this if it's just a little bit wet. So anyways, it's simple and easy to get to. Good enough for me.
All right, guys. Well, we're finally kind of getting settled in for the evening. Um, we've got a glass of Pendleton poured. We're actually drinking the Pendleton Midnight tonight. This is actually my favorite of all the Pendletons. Um, I like them all, but the Midnight's my favorite. Ah, that's super good. But anyways, I know I can be a little bit on the lazy side a lot of times when you guys see me cooking meals. Uh, last few videos, I've just actually just thrown a can of Denny Moore on the scottle and called it good. But um, tonight we're going to try to do something a little, a little better. We're still going to go with a stew because I just think you can't beat a stew on a good cold wintry night. But um, we're going to use, uh, we're not going to just throw a can of Denny Moore. We're going to use all fresh ingredients. So right now I've got some baby red potatoes and some baby carrots. Uh, cooking here on the scottle and you know they usually take the longest to cook so I'm just gonna get go ahead and let them cook until they're good and tender and then we got some other things I've got some uh, onions and and celery that I've already cut up and then I've got some uh, and then I've got a few other things like garlic and butter and uh, we're gonna use a little bit of this uh, Three Creeks Five Pine Chocolate Porter I've got some mushrooms that we'll probably put in absolutely last because they cook up pretty quickly. And then we're going to, for the meat, we're going to use, um, we're gonna use some bear sausage, some bear breakfast sausage. This is uh, from my bear that I got during archery season. So we're gonna use a little bear breakfast sausage uh, for the meat. And since it's already been ground and seasonings for the breakfast sausage been added to it, it really adds a lot of flavor to the stew. I think it's gonna be really good. But anyways, we're gonna just kind of let this cook up and uh, we'll uh, see how she comes out. Right, guys I mean I can't even tell you I can't even tell you how good this is oh my god I can tell you this it's not Denty Moore it's not Denty Moore mmm this is so good a little bit of heat from those red peppers the gravy thickened up really nice the potatoes are done mmm like everything is done just perfect. Nothing's like overdone or mushy. Mmm. Oh man, sometimes it is definitely worth it not to be lazy. And tonight was one of those nights. This is super good. Mmm. Yeah, I think that beer, uh, putting that beer in, which I will um, give credit where credit is due. I did see uh, Chad from Living the Van Life. He just recently posted a video where he used a dark beer in uh, one of a stew that he made. So that kind of gave me the idea. But man, I tell you what, I'll be uh, keeping that in mind. Yeah, that's super good. That's so good. That's so good. Anyways. 
I'm gonna eat this and um, I'm gonna enjoy my fire. I'm gonna listen to the, the river. It's not currently snowing at the moment, but I'm um, hoping that we'll get a little bit more snow and uh, maybe even wake up to a little bit of a winter wonderland in the morning or more winter wonderland than we already have. But um, yeah, I'm gonna enjoy the rest of this evening and eat this stew. I'll catch you guys in the morning. <sighs> Good morning folks. Well, we are getting up this morning and we've got a beautiful new layer of snow. Not too much. Looks like maybe an inch or so. Nothing too crazy. But it is currently snowing right now and it's just really beautiful. And I'm um, just enjoying it from inside the trailer here. Kind of just been relaxing and, and drinking a little bit of coffee. and and just enjoying uh, watching the snow fall through the, the door here and seeing the river flow by. It's really been pleasant and nice. But I do think I am going to get up here probably after this cup of coffee and uh, we're going to make some breakfast. And I, my plan is biscuits and gravy this morning. And I know I've done biscuits and gravy in past videos, but I thought maybe I'd share just a few more little tips or tricks that I have found for specifically doing the biscuits on the Scottle. So. Hopefully you guys will enjoy that, but let's finish this cup of coffee and, and uh, get out in it. Alright folks, well we're starting to get breakfast going here. Um, we've already got the biscuits on and they've been cooking for just a little bit. Uh, we're using a little grate that kind of keeps the biscuits off the surface. This one is actually from Timbo Tusk, but you can you know, find these probably something like similar to this at any kitchen supply store. And then of course we're keeping a lid on the biscuits as well. but. The trick to doing these biscuits and getting them not to burn is just flip them often. And it's a little bit challenging because they can be kind of soft in the beginning, So, but you just have to kind of keep flipping them, keep flipping them so that they can evenly cook and not burn. And you should end up with some good golden brown biscuits. Also, you want to run the scottle on a pretty low heat um, so that it's not kicking out a ton of heat. You want it to actually take a little bit of time and uh, cook the biscuits through. We're also going to make some gravy. We're going to cheat with a little packet of country gravy and we'll mix in of course some of the leftover um, bear breakfast sausage and that will make you know a good sausage gravy for us to put on our biscuits. I also got uh, some hot water boiling over here. I found me a new piece of camp gear that someone decided to leave behind here in this camp. It's just a little great i've seen one similar at some of the mart stores but uh, somebody left one behind and i think i'll keep it throw it in my camp because it works pretty good for throwing over the solo stove so i have a way of uh, keeping some hot water on and that's something i really like to do when i'm out in these winter camps like this and especially where i have an endless supply of water flowing in front of me i like to just always have some water 
um, hot and ready to go. It's just great for, you know, making coffee or cleaning stuff up. It's just really handy to have. But yeah, somebody's, uh, another person's trash is another person's treasure. Isn't that what they say? So that'll be a cool piece of gear for me. Anyhow, I'm going to finish cooking up this breakfast and let's, um, so let's keep going on in it. Man, I tell you what, this was delicious. I've just been plowing through it, but the gravy is super good. Got just a little kick of heat from the red pepper flake that I put in there. Just the right consistency, the way I like it, nice and thick. Uh, the sauces taste amazing. The biscuits are nice and crisp on the outside without being burnt. Soft in the middle without being gooey. I mean, just really, really, really good. And just a great meal for a good wintry snowy day like we have today um, it's just been really nice actually all morning it's been snowing just non-stop I don't think it snowed that much last night but it's definitely been really consistent this morning but it's just these really big huge flakes that just kind of float down real soft and nice I think it's just cold enough for it to snow so it just makes for these just really big beautiful flakes you add in the fact we got the river and the ambient noise that it creates and a little crackle of the fire. Makes for a good, good morning. Definitely a great first winter camping trip for the van. My first introduction to the whole van life for myself. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I could ask for a better, a better trip. And I'm really excited about it. I'm really excited about the van and I'd really like to know your guys' thoughts on the van. You can leave those down below, but I'm super excited about it. Um, let me know what you guys think about the name Sasquatch, you know, because of the little Bigfoot guy on the on the side of it. I think that makes uh, a neat name for it. And hopefully as we continue to build it out, it will, you know, become the live out its name. So I'm excited about that. But just so you guys know, the Ford is not going anywhere. I'm gonna keep both vehicles. They're both gonna be used in the videos. I just think because they're both, you know, long in the tooth, it's just a good idea for me to have a backup vehicle. I do see as the van gets more built out and more set up that it will become the primary vehicle because I wanna use it as an office space. Excuse me. And the trailer will still be my living situation. So I'll live out of the trailer the van will become more of an office uh, setup for me so that way I can edit my videos and edit my uh, photos. And I think it'll be really, really cool. So, but anyways, I think I'm going to take some time to just enjoy um, a little bit more of this day without the, the complications of filming. And I'm gonna finish what little bit of uh, breakfast I have here. And, um, and then we'll, we'll, we'll pack up and get going you know, before the snow gets too deep where I have a struggle getting out with the van considering the fact that it is only two wheel drive. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a like. If you have any comments or questions, please leave those down below. Um, if you've made it this far in the video and you really enjoyed the content, you know, check out some of my other stuff. You know, please consider subscribing and I'll catch you guys again outside. Like a bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time It's clear to see From up here The world seems small We can sit together It's so beautiful You and me meant to be in the great outdoors forever free